Welcome back here with Reporters Diary. Now, in a bid to shore up the GST revenue collections, the tax department is going after 30,000 entities that are suspected of delaying their tax payments. Timsey Jepuria has gathered these details and joins us now. Timsey, how has the taxman zeroed in on these entities? Well, uh, as you rightly mentioned, in a bid to improve GST collections, the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs has reworked its strategy to meet the monthly GST collections target. Now, sources indicated that CBIC, as, it part of a, as a part of its latest strategy, using a series of measures including smart data analytics, has identified entities which were either not paying GST or were just dealing their returns. In a first of this exercise, which it undertook at the end of last month, Centre had identified 30,000 such entities and had shared their details with the field formations. Field formations then reaching out to them, uh, asking them to make timely payment and settle their returns. This alone yielded to about close to over 6,000 odd crore rupees of GST dues, which were collected in the last three days of January itself, hel trying to help the government to cross the 1 lakh crore rupee mark. Involving in this exercise is a special team housed in CBIC itself, which shall be repeating this exercise every month. Month. Thus, trying to help government to achieve the monthly average GST collections target, which is pegged at a lakh crore of rupees. Remember, in this fiscal, the government has seen this magical number only twice, first in September and next in December. So let's see whether this strategy helps the government any further to it, or will it have to again go back to the drawing board to see what next best it can do. We'll keep you posted. Back to you. Oh, absolutely, Timzy. Thank you very much for joining in with all of those details. Now, here's the latest in the IBC space. The clock is ticking and today is the last day for potential suitors to submit their bids for debt-ridden JP Infratech, which, remember, was one of the first companies identified in the list of 12 companies by the Reserve Bank of India for lenders to send to the NCLT under the bankruptcy court. Now, this company is saddled with debt of around 10,000 crore rupees and is undergoing resolution under the bankruptcy court. The four we understand that they are likely to place bids today, that is by the end of today, are NBCC, Suraksha Group, Cube Highways and Kotak Investments. Remember, for all four of these uh, plus LNT were the five players that had submitted expressions of interest. But given that LNT's interest was only part uh, in part of the company, their bid is not really expected to come in. And these four are likely to place the bids. As per the sources that we've been speaking to, NBCC and Suraksha Group are likely to be, uh, you know, the strongest contenders among the four bidders and the bids will be opened by the committee of creditors in their meeting on Monday the 18th of February. Do remember this is the second round of uh, corporate insolvency for JP Infratech after Suraksha's bid uh, of about 7300 crore rupees was rejected by the lenders and a liquidation was about to begin before which Supreme Court put a stop uh, to that process and asked the lenders to reinitiate the entire insolvency process. So this is round two and the results will keenly be awaited. Now, the Supreme Court has expressed displeasure over defective review petitions in the Rafale case. A bench headed by CGI, Ranjan Gogoi, observed that instead of rectifying the errors in the review plea, some lawyers have chosen to go to the media for publicity. Ashmit Kumar is here with more details on this. Ashmit, what were the CGI's observations? Right, so before we get into today's developments, uh, just a quick uh, uh, benefit of hindsight for the for our viewers. Let's keep in mind that 2018, the la landmark Rafale judgment, uh, the judgment which had given a clean shit to the government, was in fact subject to a great deal of ridicule, a great deal of uh, criticism on account of various factual inaccuracies. Now, factual inaccuracies to an extent that both the sides, the government as well as the petitioners, had moved modification, clarification and review petitions uh, before the apex court. Now, all that ridicule and all that criticism appears to have irked a Justice Gogoi, mind you, he was the judge who authored uh, the Rafale judgment in the first place. That appears to have irked him because today, in an unrelated case, uh, Justice Gogoi, in a thinly veiled reference, lashed out at both the government as well as the petitioners. In fact, uh, on an unrelated note, he pointed out, he made an observation uh, that while there was huge publication uh, given and huge, huge publicity was given to how modification and review petitions had been filed, he noted today that both these sets of petitions are suffering from various defects, that despite the urgency that was shown 
gone initially. No effort has gone into uh, curing those defects uh, for those petitions to be listed and heard by the Apex Court that they've been lying dormant uh, for about a month. And, and then he went on to also say, and I quote him here, uh, that even the other side is not innocent. So again, a very thinly veiled reference that coming in from Justice Gogoi. Let's keep in mind uh, that the government's modification petition, as well as a review petition that had been filed by Bhushan and company, are still uh, currently pending before the Apex Court for consideration. That's for a later date for today. Inspired by the ridicule and criticism, Justice Gogoi mounting a defense of the Apex Court. Back to you. All right, Ashmit, we'll leave it at that. Thank you very much for joining in.